Um, for today's presentation, again, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Runs from September 15th through October. And uh, we have our table of contents that we'd like for everyone to take a second to glance over and look. Uh, this is the order of our presentation that we're gonna be sharing here today. Um, also want to share that uh, between Crystal and I, we were able to collaborate on this presentation and have worked hard. And so we hope that today's presentation, um, you know, everyone learns something here today, takes away something and appreciates uh, the Hispanic heritage um, that we have in the United States that have actually um, impacted the world globally as well. So we're gonna start, start off with our origins of Hispanic history. Yeah, um, the origin of Hispanic history month uh, um, uh, date back uh, uh, to the 1960s and really a pioneer, I'll say, um, California Congressman George Brown, who started first as a commemorative, commemorative <laughs> week and um, just to really appreciate um, Hispanics in just within California um, and just to recognize them for their contribution um, in culture, history, all the diverse ways. So he was the pioneer uh, um, that studied Hispanic heritage recognition. And um, in 1968, um, Congress uh, um, also jump in and able to pass um, the proclamation for Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, and and, and um, really, it, it, it took a lot because during that time was the civil rights, there was a lot of civil rights activity going on. So that's for LBJ um, to really sign the proclamation and extend um, the Heritage Month from September 15 to October 15. That was actually very intentional because it also coincided with most of the freedom movements, liberation movements in Latin America um, from colonial uh, um, governance. So that's why it's a bridge between September and October to sort of recognize and pay respect to some of those freedom fighters. But it was really uh, um, George Walker Bush, the older Bush that uh, uh, make it a national history month. And since then, every US president have made that proclamation. But it, it, it is very important to celebrate the rich culture and contribution of Hispanic Americans to the United States. Hispanic Americans, have made significant contribution in all areas of society, including business, government, the arts, and sciences. Um, Hispanic Americans also happen to be the largest minority group in the United States. And, and, and I and uh, the DEI committee believe it's important to recognize that contribution and celebrate that contribution. So, um, it's just some context and background as to how um, we come about to celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Yes, and so we'd also like to add very quickly here, the United States Army also commemorates and honors the longstanding contribution that Hispanic Heritage have made with building and defending our country as well. And so to break down the terms and definition here, uh, Hispanic refers to people who have a Spanish speaking background. Latino refers to people who come from or have ancestry in Latin America. And um, more commonly use Latinx gender neutral term that is used to refer to people of Latin American descent. And so for Further understanding, Hispanic refers to people with cultural ties to Spain and Spanish speaking countries. Um, it further describes from Spanish speaking countries, 
um, individuals um, that includes Spain, Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, and others. They also share a common language, Spanish and certain cultural traditions, but they also have diverse racial, ethnic, and national backgrounds. Um, so below, I also want to highlight you know, that it is essential to remember that the use of these terms can vary truly depending on the content and the individual preferences. And next to it, we also have Latino. The term Latino is short for Latino Americano or Latino American, which means Latin American in Spanish. Further describes people with cultural connections to Latin America, which includes countries in the Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, um, and also includes Brazil. The uh, diverse linguistic and cultural backgrounds on the region is home to various languages and various ethnicities as well. So again, it is essential to remember that the use of these terms does uh, depend on the context and the individual preferences. So our next slide here kind of shares our United States Census Bureau. This is from 2021. Um, as you can see here, our graph shows that 19% in the United States, Hispanic and Latino uh, makes a part of our population. Uh, the bullet points here that you see, Hispanic, Latino is 19, Caucasian is 57, African-American and Black is 13%. We further have Pacific Islander, which is 1%, Native American, also 1%, uh, Asian American, 6%, and 3% th is of two or more races that make up the population um, for the United States Census Bureau. Um, further under the United States, and the military, again, you know, to show recognition, um, there were 61 individuals of Hispanic and Latino uh, heritage that actually have um, won the Medal of Honor. 13% um, makes up the United States military here in the United States. So we have the map of the Americas and the Caribbean. And we wanted to provide a dual map so everyone can see where the Latin countries are, but also show recognitions to their flags. So we'll kind of uh, zoom in on these countries here. You have Brazil, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Guyana, Paraguay, a little bit below Bolivia. We also have Chile, Argentina, and Uruguay. And these are just some of the Latin countries. You can see we have other locations here in the Caribbean, Mexico. So again, with these dual screens and the dual countries with the flags, just kind of take a few seconds to glance at it because uh, we've got a little fun game coming up here on our next slide, so. If I can get that right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've got guess the country. We've got three flags here. Our first flag is one of the countries. And so a little uh, note for this country, they're known for uh, frequent earthquakes and volcanoes. And so that's just a little quick tip here. So if everyone can either put their little answers in the comments or in the chat. But we'll give you guys a few seconds to uh, guess this country. And you can speak up to if you're able to, if you have a microphone. Yeah, or if you, if you guys wanna shout it out, that's I think you need to go back to the other map first. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we could do that. Okay. Oh, he has, exactly. he has some answers in there. Yeah. Got some answers in there. Okay, we got Chile. All right. All right. 
Oh, we got some answers. Yep. So the answer is, you're right, El Salvador. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who answered, Pia. Thank you. Our second slide here is a little quick tip for everyone. It's the second most awarded country to win the Miss Universe titles. <laughs> That's right, Venezuela. And our last country here is known for their subtropical forests, waterfalls, and swamplands. Anyone's welcome to also shout it out. But the answer is, I haven't seen any, anyone in the answers. And it's Paraguay, that's right. <laughs> so hopefully that was fun for y'all. And there's more of this coming up next. So we got more quizzes for y'all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so here we wanted to highlight two <laughs> historical landmarks, um, Machu Picchu and the Atacama Desert uh, um, in Chile. And um, obviously very famous uh, um, Landmark in Machu Picchu is um, high get to learn about the Atacama Desert that I had never even heard about it before. So um, something that I get to learn from this uh, um, exercise. Um, but Machu Picchu, um, obviously an ancient city with a great deal of uh, um, historical significance to the culture. Uh, um, in Peru, and I'll say to the rest of the world. Um, but it was really a forgotten city or a lost city until 1911, when an American explorer, educator, um, took a group of people to go investigate the Inca civilization. Uh, um, so, and that happened in 1911, and his name was Ingram Bangham. Bingham, Ingram Bingham, um, and Machu Picchu is also being considered by the United Nations as a World Heritage Site um, in 1983. Um, and that being for its um, culture and historical significance. The Atacama Desert, um, one, it's really one of the highest elevation of any desert in the world. And with beautiful landscape, geysers, volcanoes, lagoons. And um, it's also housed more large telescope than any other place in the world. Um, very popular tourist attraction that people uh, um, from around the world um, try to make a trip there and experience the rich culture of this very two very historic sites in Latin America. Here, I want to also want to highlight uh, um, two major cities um, and, and not try to do any disservice with any other city, but wanted to highlight Panama and, um, and Mexico. And uh, so, Panama is one of the most influential uh, uh, economic hub in the world it's in terms of a port city that a lot of uh, um, cargo goes through there. Um, it's also very important in terms of financial uh, um, implication um, because of how liberal their financial tax shelter is so a lot of companies go there to get some take advantage of the tax shelters that they offer um it's home to 1.4 million people and um it's also the only major city in the world that 
has a rainforest within its city limits. So very uh, um, intriguing uh, um, city. And Mexico City, date back to the Aztec and um, and discovery. Um, I'm not a big fan of the word discovery because people were already existing there, but it goes back to 1325 and um, Mexico, and then the revolution and uh, um, a very popular city also where people go to celebrate the Day of the Dead, a major um, festival and uh, um, celebration in Latin America, but people tend to want to go to Mexico City to really experience that. Um, they also have more population than New York City, just to compare. And uh, since most of us have an idea of how populated New York City is, Mexico City has more population, um, densely populated than New York City. So until another uh, um, fun quiz. So here again, if you know the answer, feel free to say it or uh, um, type it in chat. And, um, there we go. Which Central American country is famous for its canal connecting the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean? Somebody try. Oh, we're getting some answers in the chat. Everybody had some coffee today. Everybody's on it. Nice. So, right answer is Panama. Um, next question Which country is known for its iconic landmark, Machu Picchu? Oh, those the answers are really popular. Yeah, love it coming in. Good. Get my clicker going. Peru. Hispanic art and art. So, as I mentioned, uh, um, when I discussed the origin. Um, the influence of Hispanic history and um, culture in the U.S. Um, in arts, um, they've made significant, significant contribution to world culture. It's not just in the Americas. The world has benefited from the works of Frida Kahlo, Wilfred Lamb, Talisa Dumero. I always butcher that name, so you have to forgive me for it. And um, Jose Clemente Orozco, these are just very influential artists uh, um, that really represent um, Latin America culture and history. And I believe as uh, um, a world civilization will better off because of the many contributions that Latin Americans have contributed to the world. And thanks to Tyler, um, Tyler really did help enhance our presentation. So uh, cool thing they did, embedded some of their famous artwork behind uh, um, the picture. So it kind of stack it. So you may notice the flip there to highlight some of the famous work that um, some of them contributed. So with that being said, I'm sure you guys can already anticipate the next quiz. So get ready. So which Mexican artist is famous for a surrealist self-portrait and work as the two-faced Frida and the broken column? Frida. All right. Thank you. Which Latin America artist is associated with constructionist universalism?
I'm going for Joan. <laughs> for Brother Lamb. Good job, uh, Pia. <laughs> good try, though, baby. <laughs> Which of these Latin American artists is known for a painting of Brazilian landscape and people that often celebrate Brazilian culture? I struggle with it, pronouncing this name too, so don't be shy. Alicia de Moral, the last name should have a L at the end. Um, so there's a typo there. The, the mural Man at the Crossroad by Diego Rivera, originally commissioned by the Rockefeller Center in New York, was controversially destroyed due to political differences. Who was the famous artist that replaced it with its own work? Just a side note, my wife is a big fan of Diego Rivera. So, uh, um, <laughs> and she's Hispanic. So I, my team here with the DI team was able to accommodate me by adding a question that had Diego Rivera in it. <laughs> so. It looks like everybody is saying it's a Rosco. Yep. That well is correct. Wow, pretty. We have a pretty uh, uh, um, well-rounded group here with wall knowledge and geography, so. Great job, everybody. Yeah, so celebration is uh, um, takes various forms in Latin American culture. And um, in here, what we're trying to do is kind of highlight some celebrations that take place during, um, uh, um, well, that are that, uh, celebrated in Hispanic culture. So um, the first one being the quinceanera, uh, which is a coming of age um, that marks the transition from a girl to a young adult, to adulthood for the female. And it's usually um, celebrated on the 50th birthday. Uh, so it just marked that transition. And um, we have, obviously, what well, we're all here to celebrate today, um, Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, just really to um, so just set some time aside to really recognize the many, many, many contributions of um, um, Hispanic Americans, Latinos, Latinx, um, that they've contributed to uh, um, society and hopefully can reach all of our lives. And talking about Independent Day, um, Colombia, just want to highlight Colombia, Independent Day, which is July 20th. And uh, a colorful celebration. Um, I am very familiar with this because uh, I'm celebrated within my family, um, the Day of the Dead. Um, celebrated over two days, um, Pan Fancy, and it's very, uh, uh, um, the entire family participated in it. Um, yeah, really, uh, um, really solid festival that a lot of people really take time to celebrate, and people really do travel to Mexico City to partake in it. And they just celebrating, recognizing those that are gone before us and um, trying to celebrate it in that way. So hopefully you remember uh, um, details from the previous slides. So hopefully you're able to answer these questions a lot more easier than the others. What is Quinceanera? Again, you can shout it in the chat or or verbally shout it out as well. Yeah, you can, yeah, A, B, whatever. You can use the letter options as well. Correct answer. 
the coming of age celebration for girl, 50th birthday, 15th birthday, so 50th, wow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, we wasn't trying to give that away, but. I know, right? What festival, <laughs> what festival characterized by colorful parade, traditional music and vibrant dance performance in the U.S.? Hispanic Heritage Month, September 15th to October 15th. During which festival do people in Mexico honor deceased loved ones? I won't try to say in the Spanish, but they have the day. Dia de los Muertos. There you go. <laughs> good job, my friend. Hey, good job to everybody. Okay, so, you know, here's our next slide. We decided we wanted to choose some very well-known, influential people um, currently in today's um, society, but also who have a history of being such a huge influence from, you know, many decades ago. Um, our first person here is Lionel Messi, very famously known um, Argentina pro football player. Uh, many say that he is the greatest football player slash soccer player of all times. I may beg the differ, but um, he's from Argentina. Uh, he has uh, received uh, seven Ballon d'Or awards, six European Golden Shoes, over 800 career goals, 672 for single club. So he also has uh, played an influential role with uh, young children learning uh, to play football and soccer, as we commonly say that here in, in the United States. Um, and also is uh, influential with um, helping his community as well. Um, our, our next person here is Shakira. She's a Colombian singer and songwriter. Uh, she is the queen of Latin music. Uh, and I do believe that she has recently been um, named queen of Latin music. Uh, she was a very young artist at the age of 13. Um, as of today's date, she's sold over 95 million records. Um, and if you guys are also into American football in the NFL, in 2021, she, along with another famous um, Hispanic and Latin American uh, actress, singer, had performed at the Super Bowl. Their performance also celebrated Hispanic and Latin culture. So that was a very well-known influential performance at the 2021 Super Bowl, along with Jennifer Lopez. We also have Roberto Clemente. He's famous for, a, for being a Puerto Rican Major League Baseball player. Um, he's won 12-time Gold Glove Award awards that he has won. Two-time World Series champion. Um, very known for his charity work, his influence with Puerto Rican young children and players to influence them to continue their dreams in playing uh, baseball as well. And we have Cesar Chavez, American labor leader and civil rights activist. Um, he was able to Unite the Farm Workers uh, Foundation. He's a co-founder. He also championed nonviolent resistance inspired by Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and of course, we have another quiz <laughs> coming up.
And we're going to start with baseball player from Puerto Rico is often considered one of the greatest in the history of the sport. Again, you guys can put your answers in the chat below or feel free to shout it out. And are there any baseball players or fans that are in our uh, presentation today? Anybody enjoy baseball or have played baseball? We can allow us to see answers. Yep. And the answer is Roberto Clemente. Our next uh, quiz here is Argentina soccer player, widely regarded as the greatest players of all time. Well, everybody, Pittsburgh, wow, yep. All right, Jason. And the answer is Messi. That's right. Okay, and if you again, if you guys are those NFL fans, Colombian singer is known for hits like Hips Don't Lie and Whenever, Wherever. Shakira. So, yep. And see, everybody answered that correctly. The next slide um, to continue to uh, build on um, contribution in entertainment uh, um, industry. Um, here we're highlighting Jennifer Lopez um, of um, Puerto Rican background. Um, it's really uh, amazing how successful really she's been when going through uh, um, this exercise. Um, so yeah, so she's really done very well uh, uh, for herself and also representing the culture and um, with success in music uh, um, as well as acting. And she started uh, uh, um, dancing career as a flag girl on In Living Color. So um, for those that remember In Living Color by the Wayne Brothers that host a variety show back in the 90s. And Rita Morano, um, one of the most famous, successful, um, transcendent uh, um, figure in Latin America, um, entertainment history and culture and contribution to the to America entertaining industry uh, as a whole. Um, she was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And um, for also those that remember uh, um, the West Side Story, uh, um, she uh, played a very uh, um, huge role in that movie as well. And, um, and continue to this day um, to act and influence uh, uh, younger generations. So one of the most um, famous figures in um, Latin America, entertainment law. And just to add the original West Side Story. Yes, the original West Side Story, that is correct. Mm -hmm. um, um, Benicio Del Toro, um, very gifted, talented actor um, that really, I like it, it, it's, I'm personally, I'm a fan of his. I like his work, um, but made huge contribution um, to the culture as well in terms of acting and some of his activism work too that uh, not highlighted here, but really great guy. Uh, um, and if I could recommend any movie up here, um, I would say check out 21 Grand. That is a very, very powerful movie if you haven't seen it um check it out and uh we also have judge lopez judge lopez stand-up comedian 
as well as uh, um, an actor as well. He had his own sitcom and um, he refused to perpetuate any negative images of Latin Americans on his shows. Uh, it will not feature anyone, any gangbanger or anyone struggling with the law that he refused to put that on his sitcom and any shows that he's a creative director on. So he's really big on um, the proper representation um, of Latin American people in films. So I hope you guys are ready for another quiz. And same here. If you know the answer, you can type it up or uh, um, feel free to just say it. Uh, um, that is welcome as well. First Latina to top the box office and with the movie The Wedding Planner and Billboard album chart at the same time. Who is this Latina? Jennifer Lopez. So the next question, first Hispanic star to end the coveted Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony status. That is uh, uh, um, quite the accomplishment to um, garner all of those awards. So who will be that? Let's see, are we getting any? Yes, we are. That is correct. Um, Rita Morano. Next question. First Mexican American lead in a prime time series. George Lopez. Thank you guys for chiming in. I'll turn it over to White Corner. Yes, and of course, guys, I I couldn't leave out food. Who is hungry? I know it's 7.40 a.m., but I can eat. <laughs> so traditional Latin American cuisine, of course, we all know and familiar with tacos. It's a Mexican dish made from filled tortilla, typical containing ingredients like meat, beans, cheese, and vegetables. They offer a delightful mix of flavors and textures showcasing the diversity of Mexican cuisine. Uh, some of the other ingredients um, that is commonly used in tacos would be radish, onion, or cilantro. Um, and the tortilla is made up of more commonly with corn or flour, but more commonly with corn, which is my which is my personal preference. Um, Tacos are made in many different flavors with different sauces as well um, to add to it. Guacamole is pretty commonly used, tomatoes. Um, so although it is Wednesday, we just missed Taco Tuesday. You can have this any day of the week. Uh, so we have ceviche. Uh, ceviche is a beloved coastal dish. It's across all Latin American countries prepared by marinating uh, raw seafood. Um, it's usually marinated in some sort of citrus juice, lemon, lime, orange, um, and variety of spices. The acidity um, cooks the raw seafood. So this is not something that needs to be heated up, warmed up, or cooked in an oven or over the stove. This is strictly raw. And again, that citrus does uh, cook that marinated seafood. Um, it's resulting in a refreshing and tangy uh, item, usually not a full meal, but it's usually uh, an appetizer um, or served as a side for other main dishes, main courses. 
Um, we have brigadeiro, which is a Brazilian dessert resembling with fudge and caramel um, in a truffle form made from condensed milk, cocoa butter, chocolate sprinkles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hit celebrations for birthdays, weddings in Brazil. But most significantly, I, I will add um, that it does resemble a cake pop, which is also famously known that Starbucks kind of sells. Um, so this has spanned throughout the world because cake pops is now so popular that people have it usually for breakfast. I don't mind a little dessert for breakfast. That's totally fine. And last we have pupusas, one of my also favorite dishes, thick corn tortillas from El Salvador, um, mainly uh, established, filled with cheese, beans, or meat. They're a national delicacy celebrated on the second Sundays of November, um, often made by hand, of course, fresh corn tortilla. Um, and sometimes you gotta watch out for certain fillings. Um, my favorite way to have pupusas, just my personal way, is to kind of dip them in an, another sauce. Um, I also kind of like to make a little extra double taco with it by, by folding it and filling it as well. Um, I kind of personally feel like it it makes kind of like a homemade um, taco quesadilla. So, <laughs> but pupusas we have. And of course, hey, again, who's not hungry? I am. Uh, we have the last quiz, traditional Latin American cuisine. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Sorry, but again, talk about food. I can, my eyes are always hungry. Uh, which traditional Mexican dish consists of folded or rolled tortilla filled with various ingredients such as meat, beans, cheese, and other vegetables. So it sounds like everyone has had this in their life. Everybody would know. And the first question to answer is tacos. That's right. Um, ceviche, again, a popular dish found in the coastal regions is made up of what ingredients? Everybody seems to know this one. Seems like everybody probably had this as well. Raw fish, seafood, marinade, and citrus juices and spices. Yeah. And which sweet which sweet treat from Brazil is made from condensed milk, cocoa powder, butter, and chocolate sprinkles? <laughs> Brigadeiro. Yes. <laughs> okay, we've got we got a we got a nice battle going there in the chat. I like that Pia and Jason. <laughs> Uh, um, so again, everyone, hopefully. thank you so much for for joining yeah. here today. Um, we, you know, we had a, a lot of informative information. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had this be more interactive with the group today um, for everyone who would join and participate more engaging. Um, you know, but we kind of want to open the floor if anyone had any questions or if anyone would like to share any parts of. Um, their knowledge or their culture, if they are of Hispanic heritage or experience. If you have a, if anybody would like to share, we want to open the floor. I wanted to say, um, this is Pia Upper Ortho, and I just wanted to say thank you so much. This is my very first time uh, being a Latina and participating in this. This is really fun and amazing, you guys. Thank you for putting this together. But uh, one thing that I wanted to say is that I've heard many moons ago that, um, the quinceañera, um, it came from Italy many centuries ago or whenever it came from, but it was adopted by Mexico. Do you guys know anything about that? No, that did not come up. Yeah, uh, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, yeah, it was yeah, originated. It's like, it's kind of like, um, uh, uh, like, 
I, I forget which part, but I think it's either the pizza or spaghetti. They're not really originated from Italy either. So it's something, you know, to ponder about because I, I never knew that the quinceanera to me has only been, I never celebrated my, celebrated myself. I just wanted to party and have food, you know, they don't want to do the whole dress and all that. <laughs> I just asked my mom, can I just have a party and my friends over? But yeah. <clears throat> it was uh, from what I've heard and I did some digging um, it came from Italy. Oh wow! Thank you for sharing that. Now yeah. that you've shared it, I, I, I wonder if you know through centuries and stuff, you know, there's cultures that are adopted, and that you know that just kind of brings to light currently that if you know if Spain had adopted it, and then obviously if that was brought over, and then you know, yeah, you know, Spain kind of, culture uh, have kind adopted it. Through. Yeah, and, and, and probably Italy probably dropped it and kind of forgot about it, you know, didn't continue on the tradition and Mexico adopted and took over from there. Yeah, now, now I want to, I kind of want to learn what Italy calls it. It may not be yeah. called Kinsaner, but now I want to, yeah. I want to learn more yeah, about but that. If, if you look it up, it says that it had from, from, I don't know from how long ago it originated from Italy. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I thought that was yeah, interesting. Well, no, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. More information for, for everyone to learn here today. And thank you again, Pia, for attending today's um, presentation. Yeah, um, we really you appreciate you. Together. Yeah, absolutely. We really appreciate you joining in today and, and sharing that for us. Um, you know, the, the more we know, that's great. And um, does anybody else have any questions? We wanted to allow the floor to be open for some questions or for anyone else to share before we do close out. We have about 11 minutes left. Feel free, anything. I'd like to share that while I am not of Hispanic um, descent, my husband is. And so um, I get to take part in all of the rich uh, traditions and cultures the culture that his family um, celebrates anyway. Um, his mom is from Texas. And so a lot of the food that he prepares for us and that um, I've learned how to cook is um, uh, Tex-Mex is what they call it here in the States. And um, so we do make like the street tacos typically with cabbage, onion, cilantro on top of some type of seasoned meat um, and the ceviche um, is something that we make constantly in our house. but. Um, I'm not too big on raw, and so we use um, the imitation crab meat and the shrimp. And so I just wanted to throw that out there that, you know, um, sometimes the recipes are adapted to be, um, I guess, what I would say, uh, American Hispanic <laughs> to adapt to what <laughs> I grew up um, and what I'm used to eating too, but it doesn't change that it's delicious and um it's just wonderful. And then to um, piggyback off of what um, Pia was saying, you know, I I didn't know about it originating in Italy as well, as far as the quinceanera, but um, we attend at least a couple each summer. And um, the grandest one we attended was this past summer. And it's taken so seriously and it's such a special time um, in a young girl's life with a lot of families. Um, the total price tag on it was $50,000. It was an amazing, beautiful celebration. And I feel so honored that I got to be a part of it. We are we were what you would call um, a, a sponsor. And I forget the term for it, compadre or, you know, but we were honored. And so it's where, um, you know, it's considered an honor to be asked to help sponsor a quinceanera. And so, um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, well, why, if they want to have a grand party, why don't they just pay for it all themselves? And, you know, you have to understand and respect each culture for what it is. And it is truly considered an honor to be able to do that and to be asked. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with everybody. Yeah, no, thank you again, thank Belinda, you. for sharing that. And and you are, you are correct. Um, you know, quinceaneras are usually the price point of a wedding. I would like to know what they really spend on weddings, but that is correct. Uh, usually it is, uh, you know, family oriented, uh, 
family members specifically, and it's usually family members that help sponsor or um, provide things for the celebration of the 15 year old young girl uh, celebrating her change into adulthood. And it is to honor them, um, to provide respect for the young females and their families. Um, because again, it is a community and um, it is a it is a family effort. So that's correct. Yep. 50,000. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I wonder what they're going to spend on the wedding then, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, she got two families to kind of go off of now with the other, with her partner. So <laughs> hopefully that will lessen the load. Um, if anybody has any other questions, we'll allow that for another minute or two. Or share another story or a family favorite or a family tradition that they have grown up with or remember their grandparents or parents um, doing? Uh, okay, no question or comments. I just want to say that um, while Puna and I are co-hosting this, however, uh, uh, it took the entire DI committee to bring it to you guys to bring this presentation to you guys a lot of contribution and feedback um from the committee and um so just want to just give the other members their flowers that yes we appreciate uh, um all of their many contribution but also i cannot this presentation turn out the way it is because of tyler Tyler and Nancy um, and took it beyond what we even imagined. So um, just want to recognize him uh, um, here for it. So, and, and thank you guys. Um, hopefully you find some value in this um, and hopefully spur all uh, um, that intrigue you to learn a little bit more about mm -hmm. your paper. Is it the sciences? Is it arts? Is it education? entertainment, food, um, whatever it is, um, just hopefully pour something in you to go and learn a little bit more about the many contribution that our Latin American uh, um, family, neighbors, friends, co-workers um, that have contributed to the richness of the American experience. So uh, um, thank you guys for being here and for participating. Yes, thank you. And again, thank you, Tyler, who has, uh, he was able to propel our vision and um, our artistic thoughts of how we wanted to present this today. Um, but again, co-hosting with Christo and collaborating today on this project has been, you know, very rewarding. Um, again, with any project, we learn a lot, um, which is special. And then we get to share with everyone here within uh, our DEI uh, committee, but also to share with everyone uh, at ProLiance. Um, so we'd like to end, you know, a way to support Hispanic Heritage um, Month. Um, we do have a link listed below here on our last slide um, to go to hispanicheritage.org uh, to support Hispanic Heritage Foundation for 2023. Uh, the Hispanic Heritage Foundation, it identifies, inspires, prepares, and connects people of Latino leaders in the community, the classroom for education, and within the workforce as well. Um, so we wanted to also share, if you click the link, you'll learn a couple different things. Um, there is the 36th Annual Hispanic Heritage Awards. It will be premiering on September 29th. Um, 9, 8 central on the PBS channel. So again, that's premiering on September 29th on the PBS channel for the 36th annual Hispanic Heritage Awards. Um, they showcase uh, Hispanics and Latin uh, culture in the workforce, uh, in the media, in education, sciences, um, in arts and um, music as well. Um, 
And so that's one way you can support to watch. Um, they also have the Hispanic Heritage Awards for uh, students, uh, mostly geared for seniors to um, honor them um, and celebrate their success in education, um, in their community that they have provided any type of community service as well. Um, and there's also awards and grants for them to propel their education um, and, and career in their future. So again, thank you to every single person who has joined, participated, who was on quick for the quizzes and then has engaged with us here today. We really appreciate it. And uh, again, thank you to all of our members in our DEI committee here at ProLiance. We hope today's presentation, you took away something positive um, that will help influence you to celebrate other Hispanic and Latin heritage culture. So thanks again.